Here are some Dolphins good news. Quarterback Tua Tungavailoa remained limited in Friday's practice with a left thumb injury. But he has shed the tape on his injured throwing hand. Tungavailoa is evolving his playstyle and it is difficult to grasp him. This will be the Dolphins' great weapon this Sunday. As a rookie of the year, Tua Tungavailoa deserves more than that. But injuries never let go Dolphins' as QBs. He said, Adversity has always been in my life, from high school, college, injuries and also in the NFL. Now, his thumb is not just injured in a few weeks, but perhaps we have to go back to the torn days in Alabama. Remember, on March 2018, during a spring practice before his first full season as Alabama's starter, Tungavailoa hits a lineman's helmet while throwing a pass and sucks his finger. The injury requires a quick surgery, but he misses no practice time. Thus, almost two years after the incident, his thumb is still a hindrance to Tua becoming bigger. Understandably, the high intensity of competition and training is the main cause of repeat injuries. However, what have Dolphins' team of doctors been doing during the past time? Or let him play with his thumb hurting like last week with the Bengals? This question, please help me answer it. I really can't understand. Second, how Tua Tungavailoa's tactical thinking and skills have changed dramatically. Tungavailoa put together arguably his best quarter as a pro in the third quarter of Sunday's 19-7 win against the Cincinnati Bengals. He appeared more comfortable within the offense, more confident in making quick decisions and more effective maximizing his playmaker's skill set with tight window throws. I'd say the only thing that was different was our tempo. We just got on the ball, and then we played, said Tungavailoa after throwing for a career-high 296 yards, a number that could have been even better without a dropped 50-yard deep ball by Jakeem Grant. The reason we did that was it confuses the defense not to get into their calls that they want to get into, whether it's a pressure call or a coverage call. So that was our only adjustment. We've just got to play football. That was it. A taste of that up-tempo Tungavailoa, the one that went 13 of 16 for 167 yards and a touchdown in the third quarter, proves the Dolphins found something good there. An increase in empty packages also proved effective for Tungavailoa in a bounce-back performance Sunday. For continued development from the rookie, more no huddle and empty packages seem to be an important key. It worked for us. We were able to kind of catch them in some personnels and some calls that they weren't ready for, but ultimately, that goes back to coaching, and they did a great job getting calls in quick, and the offensive line did a great job getting to a time, Dolphins tight end Mike Jasicki said. And Tua just went out there and threw it to the open guy. Before Sunday, Tungavailoa had not used much tempo outside of two-minute and end-of-game situations. Gailey has said he's not a huge fan of no huddle because it's a limited package and he worries going quick often handcuffs his quarterback's ability to dissect a pre-snap defense, but after he saw Tungavailoa's success with it Sunday, he noted, you got to be flexible, and, do different things to move the football, and if up-tempo is one of those things, then we're going to use that to help us. After playing somewhat frantically in the Dolphins' 20-13 loss to the Denver Broncos, a game when he was benched by coach Brian Flores for poor play, Tungavailoa looked completely in control in the second half Sunday once the team went to more no huddle and empty packages. We will continue to use it. How much, I think it will depend, depend on the game and the situation. We felt like that would help us in the second half of that game, and obviously it did, Gailey said. It was obviously good for him and for us so it will be a part of what we do. I'm pretty sure, from here on out, the challenges are Tungavailoa doesn't get as much time to see what's happening. The benefits are the defense doesn't get as much time to see what's happening. You've got to decide the trade-off. The stat that stands out is Tungavailoa on average took 2.38 seconds to throw Sunday, the second fastest in week 13 behind Colts quarterback Phillip Rivers. Coming into the game he was a tad slower, averaging 2.6 seconds per throw, 11th fastest. Tungavailoa also went 4 of 6 for 86 yards on passes deeper than 10 yards in the second half compared to 0 for 5 in the first half. When you're on the ball and you're going fast, it confuses the defense because they need to get lined up. They can't get their right call in at times, Vailoa said. Then when you have guys motioning, it confuses up their call, if they have a blitz on or what coverage they're going to run. So the up-tempo things that we did in the second half really helped us to get the ball rolling. 
The other element was the decision to use more empty packages, meaning no running backs in the backfield. Before Sunday's game, 10 of Tungavailoa's 97 pass attempts were in empty package, he went 8 of 10 for 52 yards and a touchdown. During Sunday's game, 10 of Tungavailoa's 39 pass attempts were in empty package, he went 9 of 10 for 106 yards. Tungavailoa's 85% completion rate in empty packages, admittedly with a small sample, is his best among all traditional packages. Empty defines rushers. People have to go out and cover those guys, so it defines who is rushing, Gailey said. We feel like it gives him an opportunity to see where the rushers are coming from and see where the matchups we like are more distinctly. One play Sunday that defined this came early in the third quarter. It came in the no huddle, empty package with running back Miles Gaskin playing outside receiver, the offensive line protected well with Tungavailoa rolling out to his left as into a scramble drill and he hit Gaskin for a 35-yard reception that set up the team's first touchdown. Tungavailoa showed great feel, comfort and patience in the huddle, which Gaskin described as a nice change-up. They sped it up a little more in the second half, Bengals safety Jesse Bates 3 said. In the first half, we stopped the run and eliminated the explosive plays. And then in the second half, they got us on our heels when they went hurry up in that empty formation they continually go into, they kind of got us backed up. They were moving the ball pretty well. Now, the difficult part for the Dolphins is to balance these successful packages with other elements of the offense. As the Dolphins prepare to face the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, CBS Flores made clear they would adjust the game plan. If we can turn on the tape and see someone else running no huddle against Kansas City and they are getting stoned every play, in that case we wouldn't do it, Flores said. I don't think that's an every week thing, it's an every week thing. It's more something you can go to in the offense. There are elements of Gailey's offense, such as the run-pass options, two tight end play action game and base packages that can be fruitful, but they haven't consistently worked with the rookie quarterback. Tungavailoa admitted Gailey, put us in a good situation, in the first half, but, everyone was clicking on a fence except me. That self-awareness is why Tungavailoa is sure to grow here, but for now, all involved might benefit by maximizing what he's doing best, more no-huddle and empty packages.